What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day because we're gonna be going over upgraded batteries. So we're gonna be talking about a 72 volt upgraded battery, a 60 volt upgraded battery. We'll mention a stock battery for a second just to compare how much better these batteries are. And we're gonna go over everything you need to know when you're actually purchasing an upgraded battery, how they fit, the range you're gonna get, which battery to choose, where to buy it from, where you get a discount code, all that fun stuff. So hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. All right guys, if you've been following our channel for a month or two, you'll know it's no secret. We've been kind of hinting that me and Alex have been running upgraded 72 volt batteries on both of our Talaria Sting electric motos. So with 72, we had to run aftermarket controllers. I started with a KO Nano controller, and then we both just moved to EBMX X9000 controllers. And that is a really nice combo for this battery. We'll go into a little more depth on that later, but here's the battery that we've been running. So we picked these guys up from our local dealer here, Charge Cycle Works. They have an incredible deal on this battery and we also have a discount code. So we'll leave that down below. You can get 5% off a battery and charger, which really adds up and their pricing is already the best that we've seen. So if you guys are interested in these batteries, a 72 volt, even a 60 volt, Suron or Talaria, you guys better check that link and you can head on over to Charge Cycle Works. They ship from the US, they ship really quick. They're, they're in stock a lot. So keep that in mind throughout this video because we're gonna be selling you guys on some upgraded batteries because they are so much more fun out on the trail. You can ride for longer, you can ride faster, you can ride more power. But now let's get into kind of the differences between 72 and 60 and go through the actual buying process. Like what you really need to know how to read battery voltage instead of percentage, what you need to know to fit these batteries in your bike. Do you need a tall lid? Do you not need a tall lid? Do you need a giant battery? Do you need a smaller battery? How much power can you run? Stay tuned, because that's all stuff that we're gonna go over in this video. There are two main aftermarket battery manufacturers that have been around for a little while. There's a few other small offs that we're not gonna mention today, but those two are Chai batteries. They're here in the US and then EBMX. So you're wondering probably what is this battery? So this is an, an identical battery to the EBMX battery. It is produced in the same factory, except it is now sold locally in the US through Charged CycleWorks. So it's identical in specs, identical in power ratings, size, all that stuff, all of the same battery models between 60 volt, 70 volt, larger and smaller capacity batteries are gonna be for sale through Charge Cycle Works. And once again, they have the best pricing that we've seen, plus we have that 5% discount code on top of it. So the batteries that are available is this one, is a 72 volt, 42 amp hour size. They also have a larger 72 volt, 57 amp hour size. That one, you need a taller lid. We'll talk about that in a second. For 60 volt, they have a 60 volt, 53 amp hour, which is very equivalent in size to this 72. They also have a larger 60 volt capacity that is a 60 volt, 65 amp hour. That one also needs a taller lid. And then for Suron, there is the exact same specs between 60 volt and 72 volt. And those fit a little bit differently as well. You sometimes either need a seat riser kit or a taller lid as well. So in going over the options that are available in this type of battery, the things we really like about them are one, they're potted. So they are extremely durable. So we're gonna do a little sound test here. Okay, you guys listen to this mic. Okay, you listen to that. Here is a stock Tolari Sting battery. So you can tell they packed everything they possibly could into this aluminum shell. So it's essentially full of almost a gel-like substance that fills in any gap. So there's no rattling, there's no wear on components inside. And we've been told that you can actually drop this battery and still have it be just fine. Now we do not recommend that. There is a two year warranty on this battery, although I don't think that counts when you're dropping it. But two year manufacturer warranty on this battery, you can contact Charge Cycle Works, they will get you set up on that. So 60 volt and 72 volt batteries have a few differences. So we're gonna go over those. One being the power that the battery is capable of producing and actually putting through the bike. Now, a lot of those things come down to other parameters such as your motor, what controller you're running, all those type of things. The baseline is that a 72 volt battery has to run an aftermarket controller on a Talaria or a Suron. You cannot run a stock controller. Now, an aftermarket 60 volt battery, you can drop that straight into a stock bike and it will run and have a lot more capacity or range than your stock battery. However, you will get no extra power performance or top speed performance, you will just get more range. Now there's a huge misconception about that you have to run a 72 volt battery if you wanna run more power than a stock bike. And that is just not true. 
Now, what is true is that you can run higher power with a 72 volt aftermarket battery than a 60 volt aftermarket battery, but they can still both run extremely high power and probably more than most people are ever gonna want. So let's get into those numbers sort of basically. So if you're running a stock controller on a Sting R, you only get eight kilowatts. If you're running a stock Suron, you get six kilowatts. If you're running an older Tellari MX3, you get six kilowatts as well. With this 72 volt battery, and a controller that is capable of running this battery, you can push upwards of 20 kilowatts. So that is two, sometimes three times more than your stock bike can run, which is just an extreme amount of power. Now, an upgraded 60 volt battery can actually get close to that in most cases with the same controller. However, when you're running extremely high power like that, a 72 volt battery is more efficient. It also runs cooler, the motor runs cooler, and the controller runs cooler. Because of the way that the current is actually flowing through the whole system, you can get a little bit higher top speed. So that is the advantages to a 72. So that huge misconception is just not quite true. Both aftermarket batteries, 60 volt and 72 volt can both run much higher power than stock. 72 volt just does it a little bit better and it feels a little bit better. And that kind of leads us to a lot of aftermarket controllers have nicer tunes built for 72 volt. So there's a few other small advantages, but if you're kind of like you're new to your bike, but you want more range, you can totally just get a 60 volt, drop it in your bike. Don't have to worry about getting a new controller, programming it, doing all that stuff. You'll get more range down the road. Maybe you want a new controller. You can totally get a new controller and you can still run probably plenty high of power than you will ever need. So that's kind of the difference between 60 volt and 72. There's obviously more depth that you can go into, but I think this is going to be enough for most people and help you decide which battery to choose from. If your plan is to just go with an aftermarket controller right away, we recommend 72 volt because it does just feel better to us. It runs more efficiently, runs a little bit cooler. It just feels better in our opinion. So we pretty much recommend most people do go the 72 volt route. That's why you're always hearing about it. But again, a 60 will also perform really well. So the other misconception is that everybody wants the biggest battery that you can possibly get for these bikes. And that was me. I was one of those guys, I wanted the absolute longest range, the max capacity, the most power output possible for this bike. And then I realized that you just don't need it. Like there is some people that need that capacity that want to ride for four, five, six hours. But you guys have seen the adventures we go on. I haven't really felt like I've needed more range than this smaller 72 volt battery can provide. So we're gonna go over the two sizes really quick and we're gonna show you how to directly compare the size of a 60 volt to a 72 volt. And that is by calculating your watt hours, which is how you directly compare different voltages. So to calculate those watt hours, you're gonna multiply the voltage times the amp hour. So in this case, we're gonna do 72 times 42. And that number is 3,024 watt hours. Okay, so that is this battery. A stock Tellari Sting R, you're gonna calculate 60 times 43 amp hours. I know it says it's 45, but it's technically 43 amp hours. So we're gonna do 60 times 43 and you get? 2580 watt okay. hours. Okay, so that is a literal direct comparison. That is how you manage a battery side by side and you can actually compare the difference of the actual capacity that you can run, AKA your range of the bike. You're noticing about a 20 to 25% increase with this 72 volt over a Tellaria Sting R battery, which is already about 20% of an increase over a stock Suron battery or a Sting MX3 battery. So the big 72 volt version of this battery is a 7257 amp hour and its huge capacity is 4,104 watt hours. So that's a huge difference from this battery and from, especially from the stock batteries. So there is a 60 volt variant of both of those batteries. So there's one that is literally in the same compartment as this, same size. It is slightly bigger capacity than this 72, but very, very close in watt hours. And then the larger 60 volt is slightly smaller than the larger 72 volt, if that makes sense. So we'll put them up on screen so you guys can compare the watt hours directly next to each other. But that leads me into my next point is that misconception on why getting the biggest battery isn't always the best. Okay, so this Sting R battery is 32 pounds, okay? A Sting MX3 battery is 27, okay? So 27 pounds, then 32 pounds, then this battery is 39 pounds, okay? That's already a big difference in weight. 
And then the upgraded 72 volt that's even bigger, 57 amp hour is 48 pounds. So if you have a Sting MX3, you put that battery in, that's another 20 pounds heavier that your bike is gonna be. Even if you have a Sting R, that's what, 16 pounds? 16 pounds. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you understand how big of a difference that is. And even though you're getting more range, unless you're using that range every single ride, it's pretty unnecessary for most of the time. Like, you know who you are if you need that battery. If you don't ride all the time and really push the limits, then it's kind of just lugging extra weight around. You also need a much taller battery lid. We'll show you how this fits in just a second. You need a bigger, taller lid for the bigger 72 volt and the bigger 60 volt. We're gonna put this battery in, but we're gonna show you our favorite features about it, and that is that it doesn't rattle inside a Tolaria Sting frame, MX3 or MX4. It doesn't rattle in a Suron. It fits really snugly, and on this size and the smaller 60 volt, you can use the stock lid. So it goes right in without having to buy an extra lid, but there's a few slight modifications you have to make on the Talaria side. So let's bring this over here, Alex. Okay, so we love how this battery fits, but here's what you need to know. So we actually had to slightly Dremel two spots in the frame right here and right here. So that is for these bolts, okay? There's two protruding bolts, one on each side that like, could fit if you really jammed it in there, but we recommend just slightly grinding your frame. It's not gonna do anything structurally damaging to it. It's gonna fit just fine. The one other thing is that on the Sting R, to reduce the battery rattle on a stock bike, they made thicker rubber pads here. And because of that, it makes this battery extremely tight. Now it can go in and it will fit all the way in flush and it will not rattle at all. But we recommend if you're gonna be removing this battery ever, ever or fairly often, we recommend just sanding that rubber just a little bit. Like it doesn't take that much. You could use your Dremel, sand it a little bit and then it will fit and be a little bit easier to remove and still not rattle. I didn't have to sand mine on my Talaria, but Alex's just fit just slightly snugger than mine. So we had to sand his. But let's drop this in and kind of show you. So that goes, and you can see it's not gonna fall, but it doesn't take that much effort to push in. And then if you line up these holes, it'll actually sit flush. So that's all the way down. You kind of have to sort of jerry-rig how those holes fit a little bit, but it sits nicely in there and his lid will close. Really quick reminder, when you're taking your battery out or putting a new battery in, flip that breaker just to be safe when you're removing your plug. So we're just gonna pop this in, show you how that lid closed. We'll flip the breaker, turn the bike on, and boom, it just closes. There's no rattle. Look at that. I mean, feel how snug that is. No more need to run a battery strap or any other modifications. You don't have to have one of those pumper bags or anything to make this battery fit nice and flush. You just do just have to do those slight little modifications. Now those modifications you only have to do on a Talaria, on a Suron, they will drop right in. They are also very snug, so there's no rattling as well. We've had a little bit of time kind of taking them in and out of our buddy Suron. He has this 6053 version. So you guys saw that this size 72 volt and also the smaller 60 volt 53 amp hour will drop right in there. They fit really nice and flush. Now, if you are getting the larger variant of both of those, the 57 amp hour 72 volt, or the 60 volt, 65 amp hour, you do have to have the really tall lid. So that lid you can also purchase from Church Cycle Works, but it's gonna be about this tall. We'll, we'll overlay a picture so you guys can see. Now, we mentioned that for most people, these upgraded batteries are gonna do everything you're gonna need, and they're gonna have a lot more range than stock. However, if you want the biggest battery you can get, then those are the ones to get. They can get tons of range, like a ton of range, more than you're probably gonna wanna ride. But if that's what you want, go for it. Get yourself a taller lid. Let's move on to one more thing over here. So this battery, this tripped us up for a second. This has a power button. So this battery, when you get it, you gotta pop that power button. Otherwise your bike's gonna get no power at all. So we put the battery in, the bike wouldn't turn on and we took us a few minutes to realize we had to push that button. Also on the Suron batteries, they still have the battery percentage gauge, which is really nice. So but you guys know what that percentage gauge looks like. It's nice to have. I wish the Talarias did the same thing. So a lot of you guys are gonna buy an upgraded battery to get more range. Some of you guys are gonna buy one to get higher power numbers and some of you guys are gonna buy it for both. Now, 
I think we've kind of gone over all the differences between the batteries. Let's now talk about some real world range situations. So we're only really speaking on the 7242 amp hour battery but I think that the 6053 is gonna be very similar to our numbers and then the bigger ones are obviously gonna have more range. But, so I've been running the 7242 on my Telaria Sting. I've been running higher power than a stock Sting R, like significantly. I've been running 12, 15 kilowatts. I'm not always using that all the time, but I've been running higher power. I've got the big, heavy 18, 21 inch wheels and tires and those, that's a lot of rolling weight. These are all things that drain battery quicker than on a stock bike. But I'm still getting between 20 and 25% more range than Reed on his stock Tulare Stingar while running more power and having more weight. Now, to give you real numbers, we oftentimes will ride close to 30 miles on a stock Tulare Stingar on a ride that we go on. That is not full throttle the entire way, but that is doing some hard pulls a lot of the time and doing a lot of trail riding. Now with this bike, we'll get back, I'll be at 30 miles and I'll still have a good 20% of usable battery that I can just keep riding. Like I've gone seven or eight miles further in sort of the same conditions than Reed in that circumstance. We have a video coming out next week where you guys will kind of see that. We do a huge loop and me and Alex with our 72s have a good 20, 25% more usable battery and Reed got back at like 3% and me and Alex weren't even close to dead. We still had a ton left that we could have used. All right guys, this section is gonna be a little bit complex to explain, but I'm gonna do my best because this is all stuff we recently learned and it was kind of trial by fire and figuring all this out. And a lot of people don't understand this. So when you're running a 72 volt battery, you pretty much have to go off of voltage to get your basic estimated range for the rest of your ride. You can't go off percentage because it just isn't actually given to you. So on my EVMX X9000, it shows the voltage right here. It has some battery bars, but those aren't really that usable. So a 72 volt starts at 84 volts when it is fully charged. And when it is completely dead, 0%, it is exactly 60 volts. Now, the problem with just reading it as a percentage is it's not all linear and it doesn't quite make sense like a stock controller would. So we're gonna put up a battery percentage chart here that adapts 72 volt voltage numbers to percentage, okay? So you guys can look at that, but here's the problem or just basically the thing you need to know. So when you are riding a 72 volt battery, your voltage is gonna go down, right? And when you get on the power harder, your voltage is gonna sag. That's called voltage sag, and that just happens in any electric vehicle. Your voltage will sag down when you get on the power, and it will sag back up when you let off the power. So as you continue through your ride, your voltage is gonna slowly go down. You'll get to 80, you'll start at 84, you'll get to 80, 78, 76, right? You'll get into the 60s, okay? So on this chart, when your voltage hits 30%, so I, don't, I can't remember the exact number, but you guys will see it on the chart. If you get to 30%, that is basically dead. I mean like zero dead. You could get a little bit further, but it is gonna die from 30% down in voltage. You will die extremely quickly. Like you will get less than a mile if you're taking it easy, okay? This is what messed me up when I first got my battery because you expect like a stock controller or like a stock battery to be able to go 100 to zero before the bike shuts off. Now, the difference there is that a stock bike and a stock controller, they only give you, so that 100% to 0% is actually 100% to 30% if you look at the voltage. So they actually are the same and you, but you just have to look at them in a little bit different way. So when I'm riding my bike and I get down to the voltage that's equivalent to 50% battery, I really only have 20% battery left instead of 50% battery left. It means I've used a good three quarters of my battery already and I, I have a little bit left. The percentages don't directly correlate, but it's pretty close. So that's something that you guys need to know and that is why if you're running a KO controller and you look at the KO app, that's why the percentage on the app shows different than the percentage on your stock display does. And that tripped me up because I would literally get to 0% on my display and my KO app reading voltage numbers would be at roughly 30. So I was like, well, why am I at zero if I'm really at 30? Well, you really are at zero and that's just the way voltage sag, voltage runs, 
So I hope this makes sense, you guys. It is very, like, it's hard to kind of wrap your brain around and you have to think of it differently. So when somebody with a 72 on Facebook says, you know, they ran this many miles and they came back with 50% on their display, it's not actually 50% left. They can't do double the range that they just did. They only have a real usable 20 and maybe another half a mile after that. Now, the nice thing is on the Suron batteries that have that battery percentage display built in, it is a normal percentage display. So it goes just like a stock bike, 100% to 0%, and that really is the same as a 72 volt running, 100% to 30%. So that bike you can drain all the way to zero necessarily. It's gonna be linear. It's not gonna just kill itself at 25% on a 72 volt, if that makes sense. One more thing. So that huge misconception out there that everybody basically won't ride their bike below 30% or 20% on a stock Suron or a stock Talaria. Well, that doesn't entirely make sense because the controller is built in, like I said, to manage that battery, manage the BMS. And when you're actually at 0% on stock bike, it's really 30% on the voltage. So you guys just, if you're at 30% and you're going home, you're not actually at 30, you're at like 50 something when you're reading voltage. Your bike is designed to go all the way down. We drain ours to zero all the time. Now we're not gonna be liable for you guys doing that. We don't recommend ever leaving your bike all the way dead. You need to charge it right away, right when you get back from a ride. But we do it all the time because electric things are made to run all the way to zero. Your phone goes to zero, your watch dies all the way. Like, Everything is made to do that. And even these aftermarket controllers have a voltage cutoff where they will shut everything down before the battery ruins itself. All right, really quick, we're gonna mention charging. So this 72 volt battery, you do have to get a different charger than your stock battery. You have to buy a charger with this battery, it has to be specific for it. Charge Cycle Works sells them. They sell it as a 15 amp charger instead of a 10 amp charger that your stock bike came with. So we are seeing even faster charge numbers on this battery, even though it has a much larger capacity than stock, where it's taken under four hours to charge this battery from all the way dead, all the way up to fully charged, which is super nice. On the 60 volt variant of these upgraded batteries, you do not need an aftermarket charger. All right, guys, that is pretty much gonna wrap up this video. I know it's like a crazy topic on trying to explain all these different variables that you need to take into consideration when you're buying an upgraded battery, why you would buy it, all those things. But we're loving the upgraded batteries. They're giving us a lot more range, a lot more power, a lot more fun. And it's just, it's fun to get out and ride and not have range anxiety. Like that's a big thing. That's why some people buy those massive batteries is just for that reason, just so they don't have to worry and go for it. Hit up Charge Cycle Works, link in the description. We got our discount code on there. It's gonna be the best price you guys are gonna find on these batteries, I promise you that. And if, if it says that they're in stock right now, it means they are in stock in Salt Lake in the USA and it'll ship to you in just a couple days. If it's out of stock, I promise they have more on the way. They literally have pallets coming because they're selling lots of these batteries because they are awesome. They have that two year warranty. Our discount code to Church Cycle Works also works on most of their products that they sell. It doesn't work on bike, but pretty much everything else, you guys go wild with it. Get yourself that 5% off, help our channel out, help our local dealer out. You guys, you guys are gonna wanna work with Charge Cycle Works. They're our local company. That discount code also helps us out as a channel. We get a little bit of a cutback for it, helps us continue with this channel. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions between these batteries, between 60 versus 72, whatever you need to know, we'll do our best to answer it. Drop a comment, and we really appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe, we'll catch you next video. See ya.